and then we're going to get started. We, um, for those of you who have seen us before, you might remember that we did a series where we started this series um, in the fall. We were just saying it simultaneously feels like yesterday and like forever ago. It was actually about nine months ago that we were coming together to talk about how to set our kids up for success with remote learning. Um, now we're on the flip side of that and we are back to kind of come together and talk about something similar, a little bit different, but how can we make the most of summer? Um, also just to acknowledge that we have been through a lot and we made it. Um, and this year was not easy for anyone in a lot of different ways, um, but everyone who's here um, did a great job. Um, and that is said to the women on the screen, to the folks on the call, um, to myself as well, we all need to hear it. It was hard, um, but we did it and we did it well. So hopefully we're gonna have some really practical tips for you on making the most of this summer, um, but also just a little moment to acknowledge what um, you've accomplished over the past many months and what you continue to accomplish um, for your family, for your children every single day. Um, so with that said, I'm Stacey Gershkovich. I'm so excited to introduce the, uh, or I guess they'll introduce themselves to the other folks you see on the screen. Um, Jenny, you wanna get started? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny Klontz. Uh, I have been an educator for 20 plus years, and I am a mom to two children. Uh, my son Miller is 10. And my daughter Ellie is seven. Uh, I'm also mom to two new puppies who are about seven to eight months old. So a lot going on over here. Um, Stacy, you just made me think of this uh, quote when you know all of us sort of need like a pat on the back or congratulations, high five each other for making it through. Um, you might have read Wonder or seen the movie adaptation of it. Uh, and there's this line in the movie, in the book, something to the effect of everyone needs a standing ovation once in their life. And I feel like, you know, we need to like do that for one another and give, <laughs> give each other a standing O because um, we really all do need that. And now would probably be the right moment for it. So uh, nice to be with you all today. Lashonda, Hi, I'm Lashonda. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lashonda Capshaw. I've been an educator for 20 plus years as well. I'm a parent of, I'm a mom of three. I have a middle schooler. He's going into middle school. And I have a five-year-old who's going to first grade. So we did our entire kindergarten remote learning. And I have a rising eighth grader. So I have three children and um, I'm super excited for this opportunity to just powwow with you guys and we just brainstorm with each other on some great resources and how we can just move on to the summer. But like Jenny said, give yourself, I will always say like a pat on the back. And that's something that I have to give myself every day, like actually look in the mirror and say, you got this, Lashonda. And that's what you guys need to do as well. You guys did an awesome job. So I'm excited to start this conversation. And this conversation kind of came out of um, me speaking to a bunch of different people, including the folks you see on the screen today, uh, but a bunch of other people and reading so many articles about learning loss and hearing all the things we're supposed to worry about for our children. I mean, I think that's always the case. The minute you have a child, you're, I think before you have a child, you're supposed to start worrying about them. Is that the way it works? Um, but even more so now it feels, there's a lot more where we're supposed to worry about what they've missed out on, how we can catch them up, all the things that we are supposed to do. Um, my child is behind in reading, my child um, didn't do so well with remote learning, my child is struggling socially, they've missed out on a lot of um, emotional and social interactions that um, they normally would have had when they were, um, I myself have a three-year-old, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, um, you know, those are the years where interaction in a school is critical, and I mean, I guess you could argue the same is true at different ages, but at least that's my experience. Um, my, maybe there's some nervousness about my child's not ready to kind of return to school. They're nervous about being in social interactions. There's lots of lists of all the things that we could worry about. And I was in a conversation with another educator who, you know, reminded us, uh, reminded me 
of the fact that there was a lot that happened that wouldn't have happened if it weren't because we were forced into this situation. Um, and that is not to say that there was anything, you know, there's obviously lots of devastation and loss that happened, but there was some good that came out of um, the past year. And I wanna take a moment just to ask uh, the folks we see here and the folks that are with us at, from home, what were you able to do with your kids that you weren't able you might not have been able to do if it weren't for this. Um, LaShonda, any thoughts there? Yeah, one thing that I had to reflect on, I had to really push myself to be more present and actually tap into three children who are on three different levels. And that was me taking my to-do list because I know as parents, we all had so many things that we had to do just to adjust to remote learning and also remote learning three children that's on three different levels. But I wanted to take the time also because this was a time that I haven't really had a chance to be home with them while I'm working and they're doing their schooling. So I really just had to tap into myself and say, okay, right? Like this task won't be easy, but how can we make it work for us? And that was just me taking the time to really tap into each in every one of them and also learn some things that I didn't really learn about them, right? Like what my daughter, she loves to paint. I knew she loved to paint, but actually taking the time to actually sit down with her and like order the canvases and order the paint oils. I actually had a chance to just sit and say, wow, like you're really, you're really good at this. So it's just really tapping into them and just learning, learning about them, but also being present with them and actually listening to them. There's so many moments that I think I missed out on because I was in my head trying to process all the things, but this has taught me to really be present. So I was able to actually learn each of my children in a different way. So being present was something that I took away with and I am going to really work hard at it to stay that way. Although things are starting to open up and we're trying to adjust to the new normal, that's something that I'm going to hold on to is just really being present and tapping into my children. Boy, uh, I could definitely echo all of that. Um, I was thinking I had to literally and figuratively give myself and our family a break. Um, I had to give myself a break when like I missed a call for school or, you know, trying to navigate everybody's times to log on to different things and I messed something up um, to, you know, maybe getting to one child versus the other and sort of helping them late. Maybe an assignment was not quite submitted at the exact moment it was supposed to be. And I just had to be okay with that. It wasn't my norm or my ideal, but I had to be okay with that. And then I literally had to give us a break and just, um, you know, when the weather was nice, just actually getting outside. And we did more of just sort of going outside. Luckily I had, you know, a grassy area nearby, just getting outside and throwing the Frisbee together or, um, you know, playing wiffle ball, pitching to my son so he could hit the bat and hopefully not knock any passerby over. <laughs> um, you know, we worked on puzzles together. I had this, like, you probably have something like this, like a tray that's maybe sort of decorative in your house, or maybe it's functional, who knows, but um, I flipped it over and it became like a puzzle, a, a movable puzzle area. So we'd just, like get started on a puzzle and I'd pick it up and just cart it around when like we need to use the table for school or whatever it might be. So literal and figurative breaks um, were definitely, key and something that um, I learned to do and to take advantage of for myself uh, and for our family as well. Uh, those are great. And I similarly could echo both of those things. Um, you know, for us, when remote learning started, I probably like most of you did not know what to do with the day and how to fill it in. Uh, and we started playing games and um, I realized that my kids were pretty bad losers and winners, um, <laughs> and maybe I am too, um, but I think 
as a result, I could say of the pandemic, my kids have learned to become better winners and losers because they've had more opportunities to win and lose um, in all sorts of different games. Um, and similarly, I think to Jenny um, or Lashanda, I think who said this, I was able to see my different kids' personalities come out in the way that they play games and the way that they approach winning, losing um, and whatnot. And, you know, I think it's important for us to all take a moment and to realize what are the learnings that our kids had that may have not been multiplication or reading um, a more advanced book um, or learning about, you know, something in history or a new science concept but was important critical learning to our kids' development and that will leave them um, more successful, prepared for life. Um, and those learnings are equally important. Um, and in some ways I would argue more important for our kids to learn um, as they continue to you know, navigate and learn and, and become uh, their true selves. Um, there were a bunch of answers here that I think were great. I mean, in general, I think everyone is acknowledging that they just had more time for their to be with their families for whatever reason. There was someone here who was on active duty and was able to be with their child in a way that they would not have ever been able to before. Um, obviously, there was a lot of different varieties of that as well. Um, kids, some kids thrived in remote learning. They were with all the distractions that exist in a typical environment taken away. Um, there were some kids who really just enjoyed it and, and thrived and were able to um, engage in learning in a way that they weren't able before. Um, last week, we had a conversation with educators and there was a lot of opportunities that educators found um, in this. Um, one of the things that came up was how much our kids are capable of when we are not on top of them, telling them exactly what to do. But when our kids were forced to navigate things on their own, um, they stepped up and they were able to do it. And it really showed educators what our kids are capable of. I hear David Patterson is saying that um, something similar as well. Um, I'm sorry for those of you I missed. I'm trying to scroll through really quickly, um, but it's really great to see. And I would encourage everyone to take a moment and to acknowledge something that your child or you were able to learn that maybe would not have happened if it weren't for um, this past year. Um, I'm going to keep catching up to everything that's typed in. So don't stop typing. We'll get there. Um, okay, so let's continue. Jenny, we have a summer coming up, right? School is either already over or is going to be over for most kids very soon. Um, this is a year I think many of us are even extra excited to put behind us. Um, but we've got the summer and I know there's this whole thing about summer slide and summer soar and we got to make the most of the summer. We've got to have fun. Um, and can you give us some tips and some ideas of how we could do that? So uh, my sort of background is within literacy. Uh, so full disclosure, I love books. Uh, and there's so much to love about children's books in particular. But I will confess that I fell off um, with like my bedtime reading or sort of um, you know, being aware of what my kids were or were not reading and how consistently they were doing that. Um, but I have started up my sort of nighttime bedtime stories again, and I'm really just savoring that time with my kids um, while they're still reading picture books, comic books, you know, fun, funny things that we can laugh and enjoy together. Uh, but yeah, over the summer, you know, I think you were getting at this earlier, Stacey, there's so much sort of, there's always this pressure and stress as a parent. I mean, there's so much sort of on our plates. Um, and then you think about the learning loss and you, you might see the summer as an opportunity or an obligation to do a lot of stuff um, and to sort of turn back time. But I think that only happens in the share song. And uh, so we've just got to move forward. Um, I'm really focused on helping my kids keep, you know, keep reading alive, um, keep doing things that are going to get them thinking alive, but also wanting them to just be able to play and be. And this is sort of blasphemy as an educator, but I'm not too worried about the education piece. I know they're going to get back to school. I know that 
um, there might be some gaps and that it's going to take some time, but that they will over time catch up uh, and that's going to work itself out. So I'm most sort of focused on uh, that, that interactiveness and that interconnectedness and like getting them out and doing and moving and, and things like that. But I will say back to the reading, because I, that is a love. <laughs> um, I, my daughter really loves Epic and I know I uh, use that a lot with school this year. And what I love about Epic is it sends me, I, I created like a little parent account and it sends me these little updates of like Ellie read this book today. Uh, and I like that because I'm not, then I don't have to sort of check in with her on it all the time. And it's not like I've mandated anything, but she's reading things. And she's been reading a lot of what they call funny stories lately. Shocker. Uh, so that's, that's just fun because then I can sort of engage her in a conversation around that or pick something funny to read uh, bedtime or, or whatnot. There's also this really great, um, another great resource for kids is called Books. It's like books, but with a V. Uh, and they have these beautiful stories that are illustrated and the illustrations kind of come alive. They're really great for younger kids and younger readers. I mean, that's another one that she really loves and is into. So yes, we'll read together, they'll read, but we'll also play. Um, I don't know about your kids. My kids have consumed a lot of television, movies, games, et cetera, on their devices. And I don't love it, but it's not the end of the world. Um, and we actually just sat down yesterday um, this is sort of their first week really where they're home in earnest and their summer has begun. And we made a list of things inside and outside that they can do. And that doesn't involve devices. My son was actually surprised by the number of things uh, other than his iPad or tablet that he could do, he sort of forgot. Um, but a connection to those things still. My daughter watched a lot of MC Squared. I don't know if you've seen this show. I think it's on Netflix. Um, she's very into it, but I found this book and it's all sort of like science experiments for kids. And she was downstairs concocting things in glasses with glitter this morning. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in my kitchen, but it was fine. Um, and my, we watched a lot of Master Chef as a family. So I found a Master Chef junior cookbook and my son's going to like make a, a meal a week um, with some help. Uh, you know, and try out some different things. So just trying to find connections of um, what they've done a lot, what they keep, need to keep doing and how we can sort of do new generative things together as a family. Jenny, the other app that you had mentioned was Books, books, books. It's like books, but with a V. I just, that's kind of fun, isn't it? That's books. what I thought. I was just making sure I was getting that right. Um, Karen, thanks for your question. It was Epic and books were Jenny's favorites. Um, yeah. And um, we just put it in the chat, but there are a couple of resources that we're providing. Um, so if you see that link, you can see some of the resources we have, which have some of our favorite apps um, and some other stuff as well. Great. Uh, okay, so. Reading, reading is key. Um, I am in the middle of a Beverly Cleary, Beverly Cleary and Judy Bloom. Um, we kind of go back and forth between the two authors. Um, I, I think my kid's teacher gave me a little bit of a look because I think they're a little bit outdated. Maybe they're not, um, but you know what? I love them. And if I love them, my kids are gonna love them because I'm excited about them. And it's very fun to read a book that you haven't read in you know, 30 plus years. So I was excited to it. I don't know if there's any other great books out there. I'm sure there are, but right now that's where we're stuck. Yeah, your son too uh, is very into the dog man. Book. Yeah, so this is my attempt to get him out of the dog man. Um, we love dog man and I'm not discouraging him from reading dog man, but I need to um, someone had once said to me, we had an event a while ago, there was a Dan Danielle Clayton, she's a great um, librarian, and she had said, just like uh, when your child eats, like you're not going to let them just eat pasta, right, you need to have a diverse diet, I mean, my six-year-old might argue differently, but um, they need to have a diverse diet, they need to have a diverse diet of books as well, and so I'm trying to diversify my son's diet away from Dogman. Yeah, I think all of the boys go through that because Noah actually, there's a series in a collection. 
But what's helpful in the diversity is him having an older sister. So when we talk about books and they share, his antenna starts to go. So that's definitely helpful. But also we sharing some of our favorites, like the Julie Boone and the, the Babysitter. Um, although those are oldies but goodies, but believe it or not, they're still, you know, coming back full circle. But I understand about the dogmen. I think they all go through that. Okay, good to know. Good to, to realize it's not just me that goes through this, where I look into his backpack every day and somehow he's taking out another dogman book from the library despite having all of them in our house. Um, but at least he's passionate. Um, well, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, obviously we have a summer coming um, and I'm sure everyone has different plans for the summer, but there's a lot of family time um, and a lot of home time. LaShonda, can you talk to us about just how do we make the most of that time that we have separate from the reading that we are with our families? Yes. So one thing that was super helpful for us that we were able to tap into some things that we haven't had a chance to do. So we all formed a green thumb in my family, especially Leah. She was super excited about planting and just growing things. And um, I started to want to dibble and dabble in it. So we began to plant like vegetables and it worked out so nicely. So soon as the spring came in, we said we would do it again. And uh, we had a day where, you know, everyone put on their big garden gear. And also my 12 year old, she was 12 year old at the time, she was into it too. So that's something that we adapted during the pandemic that we're going to continue to do. But like Jenny said, all of the outside play, I had to get creative and go to um, a five and below or a family dollar or a Dollar Tree or Target and get like racquetballs and just things that we haven't had a chance to do or we just didn't do. Um, bubbles became like a thing. And believe it or not, the nine-year-old loved the bubbles. Having the picnics in the backyard and now we transfer that to going to Domino Park Prospect Park for those that's in um, Brooklyn, but Domino Park and Prospect Park, um, South Street Seaport also have a nice little water water play thing over there that we go to. So when we exit out of school, usually I will be so like, okay, so here are the days we're gonna do the homework, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. Like that would usually be on my June calendar. The homework is there, but there's also a lot of, we're going outside to ride the bikes. We're going outside to do the sprinklers. We're going in the backyard to have a picnic. We're going outside to catch the butterflies in the catcher. Like those are the things we have been doing. But going back to what Stacy said, during this time with them being home, they all adapted to be independent learners. So I didn't really, I didn't really have to be on top of them too much on of course, I had to guide the kindergarten who's going to first grade, but my um, nine-year-old and my 12, my 13-year-old now, they came up with their own schedule because that was from all the foundation that I've been doing. But they also, they're like, we want to be a little one and done, right? So mom, we're getting ahead of this stuff. But as far as the reading and one of our many trips that we love, like my children will actually, they love reading. And that's something that it's been in them since they were they were young and that's something that we can't get away from. And I'm happy about that because now it trickles over to my daughter, Leah. Leah, you know, when you have three children, they all are different. So Leah is the one who's just a little, she's being on her own time. So we have to bring her in <laughs> to our world, but she's learning. But Barnes and Nobles is like the highlight of my children. My family members laugh because when they ask like, what do my children want for birthdays? And my children always say gift, Barnes and Nobles gift cards. So they also, they have a list. So we have this thing where we go to Barnes and Nobles and we do pizza and ice cream. That's just what we, what we do. And um, they have their list of their books. It's so much fun. But we also adapted these, um, these games called um, I Spy Go Fish and I spy snap. And when we were younger, it would be called um, go, go fish. When you turn all the cards down, you find the matches. But believe it or not, my teenager, 
This is something that we just all do. We we sit on the floor, we actually pack the cards up or we take them with us to the park. And that's something that you can do too, guys, like pack up little game boards or like books or bubbles and take it to the park. So that way it will, we incorporate in like the playing and learning, but they're still learning and um, having fun. But these games, believe it or not, have been super fun for us. And Barnes and Nobles actually have a lot of cool things that, um, children are into. Um, Jenny mentioned the MC Square that was Lachey's thing trickled down to Leah when we went to Barnes and Nobles. I tried to monitor what they get. You know, they have slime, they have bark food, they have things there, but I try to be strategic with her. But now she already knows the routine and she went straight to get her a science kit. And yes, Jenny, it's going to be things all over the place. But it's just so cool to see their brain. And she also thinks about some things that she learned from her science class. So the play is great because the education still will come. So summer, that's what it's going to look like for us. So on my calendar, there's lots of park days. Like we are getting out and about. There are days where I have to monitor and Jenny, yes, the children got caught up in the TV, the gadgets, the devices, but there's been a time where I'll say, turn it off, let's go outside. Turn it off, let's play Monopoly, let's play Uno. And um, my daughter, two of her friends came over and they were on the phones and the mom noticed, she said, man, like they're on their phones. But she broke the ice, went upstairs and got the Uno. So I'm just happy to see that she's learning, like, we got to put these phones down and, you know, social, sorry, my five-year-old, um, socialize. So that's what my summer is going to look like. And yes, we're um, incorporating our summer homework, our summer reading, because I know what slippage look like, but I also want them to just recharge their, their brains and the reading becomes fun to them. The, the homework becomes fun to them. And that's one thing that I am, I'm happy that I was an educator first before I became a parent because I know how to incorporate, okay, we're going to get the basics down, but I'm also going to bring like some fun to it. So my husband, he's always a little envious of me because he said, man, you make it look so easy. And I said, trust me, it's not easy, but it's just something that I've, I've learned to do. So um, I just encourage you all to continue to give yourself some grace, right? Like know that you are doing your best, but also get out there and enjoy. And there are so many free things that you can do no matter what borough that you are in, but get a small pod so the children can start socializing a little more because I know for my children, I'm happy they have siblings because that helped us out but they also miss that pair interaction and that socialization. So just try your best just to get out there and enjoy the summer. Uh, I mean, doesn't LaShonda's family trip, like I wanna join you one day. It sounds so lovely. I just wanna join LaShonda's family and go to Barnes and Noble. And I wanna learn what this MC squared, is that what it is? You I might not be able to stop if you start this, Stacey. Well, <laughs> it'll take me away from Dogman and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe I'll regret it later and I'll be begging back for Dogman. Um, but for all of you, we wanted just to acknowledge and thank you for all being here and for on behalf of your children, thank you for all that you do. And so we want to, we are going to share with you a small gift so that you can take a family trip to Barnes and Noble. Um, so after this um, webinar, you'll get an email with a Barnes and Noble small gift certificate. Um, and we hope that you can use it either to do a in-person visit or an e-visit if that is um, more convenient for you to Barnes and Noble. And we just encourage you to really let your kids guide um, and let them choose something, whether it be a book that they've been really excited even if it's Dogman, um, or if it's a game. Um, LaShonda showed us a couple of her favorites. Um, there's obviously a plenty of things that you could do with that. Um, so we hope you enjoy it and make the most of it. And if you could stop at a park on the way there or um, grab some ice cream afterwards, I'm sure that will be a trip um, that your kids will remember. Um, and then hopefully you'll have something to take home and to use on those rainy summer days or those summer days that are too hot uh, to be outside. Um, the other thing that I think is a really good point is that 
you know, summer homework, summer reading is really, really important. We all know that it needs to be done, um, but we also don't want to, to turn into an argument or a fight. And of course, that's been the case for all of us. We've all been there where, you know, the day you tell your child it's time to do homework, they don't want to do it you don't want to do it and it becomes a fight. And certainly that is going to have the opposite of the intended effect, right? The intended effect of summer learning is for our kids to continue to remember that learning is part of life and it's something that we do every day. It doesn't stop in the summertime. Um, and so just thinking about how you can make it fun. Um, just the other day, my six-year-old sat down to do her homework. Uh, her school year is not over yet, but she was not in the mood to do that homework. And she made that abundantly clear to me. Um, you know, and I could have responded in multiple ways. And I was really proud in that moment. I took a deep breath and I said, you know what? Let's time you. Let's time you and see how fast you can do problem one. And we timed her. And at first she was against it. No, no, no. It's going to take me so long. And then we did problem two and she beat her time from problem one and all of a sudden she was into it and she couldn't wait for timer three for problem three. By the time we got to problem six and there were only problem, there were only six problems that day, um, she was really into it and she actually ran upstairs to tell her brother how excited she was that she finished her last problem in you know 17 seconds or whatever it was. So um, I encourage all of you who have the summer homework sitting in front of you to think about how can you make it part of your school, part of your day, whether it be you do it first thing in the morning, whether you do it in the middle of the day, but how do you make it something that's fun and exciting and not something that is just a chore that you're trying to get through in order to get to the next thing? Anything to add there, Jenny LaShonda? You know, it's such a dance. I um, Jonathan uh, asked a question in the chat too about how we're balancing all these things, like completing the summer homework, getting them out and doing, working from home or in the office. And I mean, every person's situation is different, obviously. Um, and again, this is where you have to give yourself a break, but uh, my husband and I are both currently working from home, uh, but working. And so it is really difficult. And I'm fortunate enough that our kids are, are a little older and can sort of function in a lot of ways on their own. But, uh, you know, if you have uh, family, I'm definitely calling in uh, reinforcements over the course of the summer, from both of my kids home. Um, I've been able to get them in a couple of things here and there for, you know, like week stints. Um, but that gets very expensive too. I have grandparents nearby. So, um, just last week I went to my dad's and worked from his house a couple of days and my son helped my dad with things around his house, loves to do projects. Uh, and I worked while the kids sort of tagged along with grandpa, but you know, that's, it, it's, it is such a, a challenge, um, leaning on other people, sort of figuring out, like I kind of map out times in the day, even if it's just like a midday lunch and recess break where I can just sort of check in with them. My son said this funny thing the other day. He said, um, you know, if we have a lunch and recess time, teachers go to recess with their kids. And so that means you have to go to re recess with us. <laughs> I was like, that's such a great point. And actually we kind of enjoy that. I'll do it. I just can't do it every day, you know, and it might be for 10 minutes. It might be for 30 minutes. Um, so it's, trying to just squeeze in the things as you can um, and, and lean on other people. I think are, those are big answers, Jonathan, but those are the best I can offer because uh, it's, it's going to be messy, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh I love all of this and it's so great. And every day is different. And what I'm able to do one day, I am not able to do another day and that's fine. Um, and I think it's good for the kids. You know, obviously kids love schedules and consistency and I do too, um, but they also need to understand that there's also flexibility is an important thing as well. And so even though one day I was able to go to recess, um, if I'm not the next day, that's fine. And, and, and they'll appreciate hopefully more at some point um, the times that I was able to join. So I think that's great. Um, okay, good. So 
want to share a couple of things. So in the chat, um, you have on our website a link to two different resources. They're slightly different. One is called Family Resources, and that is just a bunch of um, resources in order to um, just links that we've pulled together from New York City. They have, New York City is providing a summer rising program. Um, these are for non oh, SA families, I think can take advantage of them as well. But any New York City family, obviously, if you're in California, um, maybe not applicable, but I would encourage you to look into your local school district to see what programs are available. Um, if you are a success parent, um, you've also heard about our summer program. Um, and you can check your email for the summer learning resources that are available throughout school and through Rightopia and the Museum of Art and Design um, and other things that are uh, available to you. Um, we also have in there links to social and emotional resources that are available, housing, meals, COVID, vaccinations, um, all of that. So if you're looking for any of those resources, hopefully it's helpful. Um, I know it um, can be overwhelming to try to find what you're looking for. So hopefully um, it is a little helpful that we pulled those together for you. Um, the other resource that I'll just point to you that is available is um, a couple of those reading resources that we love. Um, so VOOCs, Overdrive, Tumble Books, Audible Stories. Um, there's some more on there. Um, but then also a couple of just questions that you could use um, when you're reading with your child or when your child's done reading. Um, and in fact, when we were planning for this session, Jenny kind of saw my long list of questions and she said, can we simplify this a bit? Uh, Right, what you said, what about just asking, what do you think, why do you think that? Is that, is that what you said, am I getting yeah, that right? more or less, because it's like with everything, I mean, that can go in many different directions. You can get it narrower if you want to, but you know, I'm sure you as parents have received these um, very helpful resources from school, from your child's teacher. And sometimes it's just sort of like, you know, your eyes bug out of your head of, of the things that you should be asking. and it's. It can be complex, but it really doesn't need to be. It's just like, what are you reading about? What happened? What does that make you think? Why do you think that? Just very basic questions and just get kids talking because that's gonna, you know, that that will help tremendously when they get back to school with their reading, with their writing, um, with their ability to articulate themselves clearly and just interact with other people too. Um, that it's all sort of key to learning and their success when they start back to school. So. Yeah, conversations about books and just very simple questions. I mean, get your kids talking. I was in the car the other day with my son and he had his water bottle. He was coming home from soccer practice and he realized that his water bottle, you know, he was trying to make it stand um, and it would fall. Obviously, when we started driving, it would fall when we turned. Um, and just asking him, what are you noticing? Why do you think that? What does that make you think, right? Got him talking about what he was doing and actually encouraged him to keep trying new ways. Um, and so the same is true, right? It doesn't have to be, I mean, keep our list, print out our list, use it if it's helpful, um, but just ask questions that will get your kids talking. That's the best way for them to do the learning. We always say the person who's doing the talking is doing the learning. Um, bad example of that right now because we're the ones doing the talking, but um, you know what I mean, get your kids talking. It's the best way for to get them learning. Um, in that document, again, there's some science resources that are pretty great, math resources, as well as some really cool zoo trips and podcasts um, and other things that you could do virtually, in addition to obviously taking advantage of anything in person that you feel comfortable doing. So um, that's there. I encourage you to look at it, share it with a friend, um, but realize that uh, just those resources are there. If there's other resources, let us know. Um, we're happy to share with what we have, um, but let's see if we have any questions. We've got a couple minutes left. If there's any questions that you have that you didn't get answered, um, we wanna answer them. So go ahead and you can either type it right in the chat and we'll do our very best to get into it. Um, but if that doesn't work, um, I'm sorry, that will work. But if you also, you can use the Q and A. Um, so if you have a question that you want answered, put it in the Q and A and we'll make sure to get to it, or we'll do our best to get to as many as possible. Um, so with that said, uh, we've got a new parent essay who has not received your summer homework. For all of the specific essay questions, I would just encourage you to um, look in your email and respond. There's an email address that you can email right at the bottom of all the communication. 
email that link and you'll be able to get anything that you might have missed um, or that might have gone to spam by accident or um, you know maybe was never sent. Similar, I see someone in the chat is having some trouble accessing, I think it's Audible. Um, I would encourage you also to reach out to um, your school or respond to one of the emails. Uh, there's a link usually at the bottom of every email that says if you have any problems, click here and you can send an email to the appropriate person. Um, there's, there's a, I feel like all of us could answer this question, but there's a question about um, early elementary and finding a tool for phonics practice over the summer. Um, one thing that came to my mind and you guys should chime in too, uh, is just getting kids listening to language. So like the classic nursery rhymes. I don't, I don't know the, how, how young this child is, but um, classic nursery rhymes, uh, even, you know, simple poetry, uh, things, things that have sort of a rhyme and rhythm to them are nice because you can just get kids sort of um, using the language, listening for things uh, that might sound similar. Um, really any any sort of like word play and you could probably google this and find a lot of different things that you could just do orally but getting them to hear it is really important um, and will support with the phonics work as well that they'll get likely a lot of when they get back to school in the in the fall but um, if you sort of google like phonemic awareness and just listening uh, to sounds and hearing sounds that's really important but simple things you can do just through word play and and rhymes nursery rhymes and, and fun things like that yeah, I remember in the beginning of the pandemic when there was a lot of more remote learning and a lot of this use of this app that was pretty new to a lot of parents. A lot of parents were worried, is it okay if my kid is just reading online? Is it okay if my child is uh, listening to books versus reading books? And I think that that balanced diet comes into play here. Um, all of these things are really important and you should encourage your child to do all of those things. So listening to books is fabulous. Um, if they can listen and read along, that's even better. Um, reading obviously is important too, but really getting your kid to do a lot of those things. And most importantly, just to enjoy it um, and realizing that even if right now they really only like a specific type of book or a specific, this is advice to myself right now, um, you know, as long as they're happy and they're enjoying reading and have a positive relationship with reading, that's the most important thing. Also, there's some books, some um, they're called Bob books. I'm not sure what age you are um, catering to, but for our early readers, it's good, fun, but they also come with like activities that can help parents, you know, um, really foster the, the reading and the early reading, but also it's fun. So buy books if you go to Barnes and Nobles <laughs> or Amazon. <laughs> I love that, make use, um, that'll be so great. Um, okay, so we just put the link again. Um, and as we said, we'll be sending an email after the session um, with a link to all the resources that we spoke about today, in addition to a recording of this in case you want to go back and listen to anything again, or if there's someone that wasn't able to be here that you think uh, would enjoy this conversation. Um, but we're about out of time. So I want to thank everyone so much for being here. Um, we know that you are busy, but if you can fill out our survey, we'd love to hear how this met your needs. Um, and we'd love to hear from you what your experience was. So thanks for being here. Jenny, LaShonda, it's always such a pleasure to hear from you, to talk with you. I feel like I'm ready to be a better parent when I go back um, outside of this room and open and unlock my door. Um, thank you for your wisdom and for your grace. Um, and thanks for being here. Mm -hmm.